It's my privilege to introduce uh, this month's outreach uh, focus and our speaker, Rosie Silva, who is the Director of Client Services at Choices. Pregnancy nonprofit pregnancy center that offers support and help for women and men uh, who are facing unexpected pregnancies, uh, counsel, support, prayer, and um, up for a year after the baby is born. Outside, we have our um, baby shower set up there, and it, uh, this week and next week, if you get a chance, if you could drop off diapers or what they really need are baby clothes, up to 2T. And the reason I know that you need it up to 2T is because my grandson, at 10 months, was wearing 2T. So kids are bigger these days, I think. Anyway, um, at the... Uh, uh, the plates are going to be up here, and they're going to stay up here for the entire service. So when you come up for communion, do that. We're not going to pass the plate. Just one of the uh, precautions we're taking because of the virus. Uh, but if you'd like to uh, donate all cash, and uh, if you want to make out a check, make it out to St. John Divine. And it comes and it goes. So uh, with no further ado, Rosie Silva. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you this morning. And I would like to start by sharing our ministry video with you. Um, the lights are going to be dimmed. And please bring your attentions to the screens. And then I will close with some more facts. I became pregnant at the age of 14 as the result of rape. I was overwhelmed. I mean, I had never been on a date. I had never kissed a boy. And, and one day I came forward about the rape and they confirmed that I was pregnant. And I just felt like my whole world was crumbling. They tried to force me into terminating my pregnancy. In fact, um, nobody really asked me what I wanted for myself or my child. I was just told that the next day I was gonna be going on a plane to Miami for a late term abortion. And I really wasn't given any options. Um, when I found out I was pregnant, um, I was already a single mom. I was 21 and I was in college. Um, I was working really hard to take care of my son. I had an apartment and I was doing my best to like prove to everyone that I was not going to be a failure, single mother, you know, uneducated. So I was really working really hard just to, you know, um, make a better life for myself and my son. And then I found out I was pregnant again. The only option that came to my mind was I had to have an abortion. That was the only thing that I could do because there was no other alternative. I just could not see how, how it would make it work out. Four years ago, I was 17. Brian and I found out we were pregnant three weeks before school ended. I felt scared and I felt nervous when I found out I was pregnant. I wasn't sure what I was going to do at that point. There was a lot of chaos in my life. Brian and I decided that the best thing for us to do at that point in our lives was to get an abortion. That it was, we weren't ready for having a child. We were only 17. What could we do at 17 and having a kid? I met with a counselor at the time, an amazing woman, and she kind of talked to me about my options um, as far as if I decided to be a single parent, what services they could provide and support. But also she talked to me about adoption, um, open adoption, which was kind of new back then, but they walked with me through every step. Um, a dream, they helped me come up with a dream family list. I wrote down, if I could pick a dream family for my child, what, 
what would they be like down to did they both work um, what were their religious beliefs do they like pets like it was very specific and from there um, they referred me to an adoption agency uh, who gave me profiles of couples and they even walked with me through picking a family and interviewing them and building a relationship with that couple throughout my pregnancy the adoptive parents did fly into town and uh, meet my daughter within a few hours of her being born, but I did get to spend three wonderful days with her. Um, I dressed her from head to toe in pink and told her a million reasons why I was doing what I was doing. Um, it was the greatest three days of my life. Leaving the hospital, um, by far, it was probably the most traumatic moment in my life. But at the same time, I had peace knowing that she was loved and she was cared for. And for the past 18 years, we've had an open adoption, which has given me continued peace um, through pictures and letters and personal visits. And she's always known who I am in her life. That's never been a question. Receiving those phone calls and the letters and being able to visit every few years, it kind of reaffirms the decision and the sacrifice that I made. Um, doesn't make it easier, um, but it does give me some peace and it's been a blessing to see her grow and be a part of her life. I made an appointment. I just made up my mind and I went. I drove myself to the clinic. There were people of all, you know, all different backgrounds, all different statuses. I mean, I was really pretty shocked. When I went back and I talked with the counselor, I don't really remember her like giving me options or anything. Um, she probably asked me, do you know what you're here for? That kind of thing. But like I said, I had already resolved in my mind that that's what I was going to do. When I went back to actually get the procedure done, I mean, it was very, you know, sterile kind of place. Um, they don't show you the baby. They don't do anything like that. So it's really a you know, I've been to lots of doctor's appointments before. It's really just another procedure. I went back home and um, I'm pretty sure I cried that day. I felt like I was by myself. It was me against the world and life just kept on ticking. Before my abortion, I was already a Christian, but I wasn't like walking closely with the Lord. And so after I got married, you know, I rededicated my life to the Lord and I was really beginning to like seek to know him better, right? And so we were in church and they were talking about abortion and that kind of thing. But then they brought up that there was a class called Surrender in the Secret. I was like, wow, you know, I decided that I would take the class. I truly, I don't think I thought I needed it but at that point in time like I said I was really trying to get to know the Lord better and so I was like whatever freedom healing whatever it is that he has for me I want it so the class was filled with people once again all different walks of life you think you're the only one you're not the only one you know and so you know as we walked through the class and we we heard each other we shared our stories we shared our circumstances we shared you know what brought us all to this common place um, it was a beautiful thing um, I will say that going through that process probably um, I learned so much about God and his faithfulness I learned you know how he was always with me I learned about how you know he loved me he forgave me like there was just this next level of healing and freedom that I didn't even know that I needed but he gave it to me through that class. It really was such a blessing um, to me. And I mean, it was hard to go back to that time and walk through that desert place. It was not easy, but it was so worth it. We went in, Brian and I went into Choices that morning. We held, we held our heads down and we walked in, we told him who we were. Choices greeted us so kindly and so nicely and they just offered us waters. And eventually they took us into a room where we spoke with a lady named Annette. I remember her to this day. She spoke to us about everything possible. She didn't make us feel any less than what we were because of what we wanted to do. She opened up to us and showed us pamphlets and spoke to us about things. And she told us the, the raw truth of abortion, that it wasn't as simple as just taking a pill that Pry and I thought it would be. That it was just deeper than that more hurtful than that, that it wasn't just going to disappear by that pill that I would take. She told us that we didn't have, if we didn't want to do abortion, we didn't have to keep the baby because we were so young that the choices would help us find a home for our baby or family. And then um, they asked us if we want ultrasound and I hesitated for a moment, but I said yes. 
And then we went in to have the ultrasound, and that lady was so kind. She was so gentle and sweet. She acted like she didn't even know our situation, but she probably knew. <laughs> and she, we were able to see on the screen the baby was so tiny, but see the little heartbeat. I remember I bursted into tears, and Brian did too. Brian and I decided that we weren't going to have an abortion. We were going to have our baby and figure things out. From nine weeks pregnant all the way up to Bella turned a year old, I was there every week. Brian and I have grown so much after having Isabella. She made us to the people we are today. Look at her every day. That I'm so thankful for her and thankful that she's here. And I can't believe I ever wanted to do anything so awful to her, but I'm so thankful for choices for saving Isabella and saving Brian and I. Identifying the problem without offering a solution does nothing to bring about change. That's why one of our desires is to help equip the church to build a culture for life. We envision a culture where women and men faced with pregnancy decisions are transformed by the gospel of Jesus Christ and empowered to choose life for their unborn children and abundant life for their families. I realized here at the beginning um, you couldn't see the, the, the beginning part, so I'm just going to read that to you. The issue of abortion has a great impact on us locally. According to the most recent statistics in Hillsborough County, 7,000 babies lose their life to abortion each year. Florida is ranked number three in the nation. 192 children are aborted every day in Florida, eight every hour, and one every seven minutes. At Choices, we provide free pregnancy tests, ultrasounds, and ongoing support and education for families throughout their pregnancy until their baby turns a year old. Our passionate goal is to be a woman's first choice to call or visit when facing a pregnancy decision. We educate each woman who comes in for a pregnancy test on abortion, adoption, and parenting. Our services are always free, confidential, and available to everyone. Our medical staff provides a free ultrasound that allows parents to connect with their unborn baby for the first time. As a result of seeing their baby on ultrasound at our centers, over 90% of women at risk for abortion are choosing life. I want to share just a few statistics from 2019 to give you an idea of the impact the ministry has made because of your faithful support. We are reaching more women who are at risk for abortion than ever before. So in 2019, we administered a total of 556 pregnancy tests, 448 tests were positive, 367 of the positive tests were to women who were at risk for abortion. Out of those 367, we praise God that 334 made a decision for life. In 2019, 116 people committed their hearts to Christ. We are also here to offer support for the 43% of women who have had at least one abortion. Through our one-on-one -on -one counseling and surrendering the secret Bible studies, women experience healing and freedom from the heartbreak of a past abortion. I'd like just to share a brief story, a testimony from our Brandon Center. This young lady was 18 years old when she came to the center. She came in scared, lacking support and resources, and unsure what to do. Our teams were able to provide compassion, hope, and help to, I'm sorry, to her as she was educated on her pregnancy options. She also received a sonogram that confirmed her baby was nine weeks. This is directly from the client. When I first came to Choices, I didn't know if, if I was pregnant or not. I was scared, confused, and lost. When they told me I was pregnant, they also gave me a lot of guidance, positivity, and options, and that is what made me feel confident and, decide, and to decide to keep my baby. Every time I come here, I know this is a place I will always get that guidance and support. Now I am really excited about having my baby and feel joy and love, and I just know that I can do this. There are many other lives, just like this young lady, that the Lord sends through our doors every day. We thank you for your support that allows us to be able to share the truth of life and the hope of Christ. Thank you so much for having me here this morning. Appreciate your time. God bless you. Have a great day and a wonderful week.